Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about Merging Maps. My name is actually Peter Wells, not Peter Patrick. Peter Patrick is my, my colleague. I stole his presentation <laughs> from a few months ago uh, that he did at a, another Phosphor G. Uh, so I uh, will kind of freestyle this a bit based on his slides. But yeah, so as you probably heard already, uh, I'm here from Lutra Consulting. Uh, ignore Peter's stats there, uh, we are an organisation, we are uh, focusing mainly on helping organisations to leverage the power of open source GIS software, various bits of that ecosystem such as training, support, consulting, blah blah blah, quite a long list, but here today to talk about Merging Maps which is a software as a service and a set of tools that we've uh, developed, so anyway, Merging Maps uh, allows you to collect field data, share field data, publish field data and various other bits and pieces that you'll see in a moment. Um, it consists mainly of a, a mobile app on the left, uh, it used to be called Input, uh, we now call it Merging Maps Input, we're kind of bringing everything together and trying to set up a, a set of common names to be more useful for people to find online. Uh, there's a web application uh, responsible for pulling together various changes and supporting the communications and also a, a QGIS plugin. So with QGIS projects you can work either on the desktop in QGIS, on, a, on your mobile, in your pocket and everything remains in sync. Again I'll, I'll come to this in more detail in a moment. The app itself you can easily find on either Google Play or, or the App Store. Um, probably one of the most interesting or notable features of Merging Maps is the fact that it's using under the hood uh, the same libraries, it's, it's using QGIS core library and other bits and pieces to do the rendering of the projects and the reading of the projects. So anything that QGIS can support in terms of formats, vector tiles, raster tiles, like um, I, I, online uh, optimized raster tiles, Postgres, you name it, should all be supported in Merging Maps input. And the other great thing is the rendering will look the same. Same labels, you'll have your same styles, everything is the same. Wonderful. No need to worry about restyling anything. So... Mm, 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 mm. Sure, what to say about this slide? So, yeah, there's some quick previews here of some of the kind of forms that you can see, which are look very like mobile optimized, easy to use on a, on a small touch screen, which are all configurable in, in QGIS, which I'll come to in perhaps a moment. Uh, another notable, interesting point about Merging Maps is support for external uh, GPS receivers. I was at a conference last year, I believe, um, where there's a lot of GNSS hardware going around there, and I was very surprised to find uh, some guys with selling or marketing a, a device about this big, about the size of, I don't know, a, an Easter egg, uh, for less than 600 euros and capable of uh, a centimeter RTK lock. I think this might be using that one that you can see here. Where are we? Horizontal accuracy, one centimeter. Uh, that's just Bluetooth to consumer grade phone, and it's been stuck on the end of this um, this this pole here. That for me, that seems like very affordable. Mm kit for if you want something that's highly accurate plus you can just bundle it with a with a phone interesting anyway mm -hmm. right the here we can see a bit of the web app it's not that attractive looking but it does the job well uh, here here we're looking at some history of a given project like a QGIS project where some people have been making some edits and field and you might be able to see that there are, there are some versions so each time a change is made by one of your surveyors or people in the office or whatever then a, a new version is automatically created and you can track the changes between the two you can see there's some new features some edits some stuff got deleted or whatever plus you can download any of those historic versions so it's not not just the data synchronization platform but also versioning as well and uh, you may be thinking oh we could just do that with putting some files on Dropbox or something or uh, on what do the Microsoft call this get the name of it, OneDrive, whatever. Um, that will probably lead to disaster with shapefiles, as some of you may know. Two people make edits and it will bungle the whole 
shape files up and you've lost some data. But with Magin Maps, you can have you can safely have multiple surveyors working on the same area. Uh, let's say they're even editing the same layer in the field and synchronizing, no problem. Uh, so long as they're not editing the same attribute of the same feature, all the changes will be synced nicely. And even if that does happen, you just get like a conflict file which the person back at the office can sort out on the computer without much problems. So the whole point is to allow like seamless multi-user use of the, of the data. Okay. And Magic Maps itself, so so far there's like a desktop component, QGIS, a mobile uh, component as well, and the kind of glue, the online glue that pulls everything together. Uh, we offer that as a software as a service, it's a SaaS, uh, but there's also, with released this project released open source, is that, uh, there's a community edition, which is freely available, which you can deploy on your own service if you wish, and there's also like enterprise editions which are equivalent of our online SaaS for your own infrastructure. So there's like options for everyone really, whether whether or not you like something just to press a button and it works, or you want it really on your own system and you're happy to manage it, whichever, there's, there's something for you. Okay. Um, Merging Maps itself, again, we're talking about this kind of glue that's holding everything together. There's quite a lot of integration options available. So, where are we? QGIS itself, uh, there's a plugin, QGIS plugin, which will allow you to easily just like check out a project, make edits to it, push it back up, sync changes. Let's say you've got your surveyors in the field, you can hit sync and see what they've just taken, literally just then. Uh, maybe track where people are for health and safety reasons, or whatever, like, you know, you've got people outside on their own alone working or whatever. Um, mobile app, there's various integrations with Python and C++ clients. Something called DBSync as well, which uh, not only you've got your data in Merging Maps, but it will keep a Postgres table also synchronized with that as well, like in both directions. Various other bits and pieces as well, that I won't go into the details, so there's, there's like quite a lot of work with integrations going on. Soon, I keep saying that, but I'm, I'm assured it's 2023, there'll be like web publishing of uh, the data as well through a simple kind of web interface for, for publishing the data to stakeholders online who are probably not like GIS nerds. They can use a web browser and some simple web maps, but they probably don't have a GIS set up, so this is more for them. Um, what else to say here? Besides being openly available and all based on open source software, uh, we've been now in production for three years, and I think this is as of a few months ago, but seven app releases, blah, 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 lot of, lot of stats there. And uh, the CE and the E versions were released not that long ago. Oh my gosh, terrible picture. There's one of the team there. We got them out of the basement and in the sunlight for once. That was one of the few moments that we were all physically together. We have team meets like maybe once a year just to remember what we all look like because we work remotely usually. So, uh, If you'd like to learn more about how people are actually using this in practice, there's uh, a, a growing collection of case studies on our website, but some of them are quite nice. There's uh, various conservation projects to do with uh, gibbons in Vietnam and I don't know too much about the project in detail itself but there's some nice graphics at least of, of what they were doing with that on Merger Mobile. But if you have a look on the website then you can learn the details from the case study. Um, things in Czech Republic with um, waste sampling in the digital era. Again, I'm not familiar with the, with the details of the project unfortunately but you can read more about that if you would like. In, as you can tell, there's like case studies from pretty much multiple places around the world doing different things. This one in the Netherlands, forest management related. Uh, here, Senegal, I believe this is about uh, capturing accurate points for, what do you call it, stereogrammetry, uh, for c configuration of stereogrammetry. You can see there some, some points. Probably they were using something a bit more accurate than just the built-in uh, device uh, receiver. Anyway, um, so how am I doing for time? Shit, I've gone over half an hour.
You're okay. okay. Uh, hopefully that doesn't go out in the video. Okay. Uh, so yeah, there's various support we offer available for not just for onboarding, but uh, there's basic support available for for subscribers, and also there's more detailed SLA plans. Like so, there's there's again something for everyone depending on what level of support people want. Um, plus, if you prefer not to deal with us for some reason, we have many partners growing as well who are also offering uh, support for, for the, the setups, training, consultancy, and recently also GNSS hardware as well, like providers that we work with that we, can, uh, that we are very well aware of the compatibility with their devices as well, such as some of the ones I mentioned earlier, which is, which is quite interesting. Some partner logos there. Okay, um, there's a really nice growing set of documentation as well that my colleagues are working on, which every time I have it, take a look at it, it seems to be getting more and more professional, which is nice, with like 12 prepared uh, public QGIS projects as well, so the examples as well are on within the documentation, which is pretty good. And if you're interested, there's also a wish list. This is, again, quite recent. Any, any particular features or improvements that uh, you think should be there or would be interested in having this, like a, a, a setup where you can suggest something or find it already there and upvote it. And this is quite nice for us because uh, it allows us to under, better understand what users are really like. Uh, if there um, seems to be a hot spot around some particular feature, then it would make sense for us to, you know, optimize the development to, to, to target that. Uh, community options. Yeah, there's a Slack channel, newsletter, about 65,000 users so far in QGIS and various other information streams if you would like to learn more. Sorry, that was a bit of a very on-the-fly presentation without much time to prepare, so I hope I haven't whizzed through too quickly. But uh, if you would like any kind of demos or to learn more about the setup, I have some uh, demo projects that I've been looking at this morning on my phone and my computer, so I can literally show you how it's working. So. At any point today, feel free to come and grab me and uh, ask me any questions you want, and I can I can talk to you about it. So. Okay.